you had me at the title. Let's talk about Fat Stripper and where that idea came from. <laughs> ah, okay, so first of all, Fat Stripper. I wasn't even going to be the Fat Stripper. Man, I'm just working, man. I know what my audience is like. I did some independent films with Master P. A lot of those movies did really well. Mm -hmm. I'm ambitious. I'm a hustler. I have my own lane. That's the thing about comedy. You wake up every day, you don't know if you're funny that day. I'm going to bring it to the show. Good friend of mine, veteran DC comic, uh, who's making waves in entertainment, Hollywood and beyond. Um, you know, we talk a lot about on this show about independent projects and, and doing for self. And this young lady is the epitome of that, the prototype, the blueprint, the architect. Please welcome to the show. I see her talking. Can you hear me? Okay, I was making make sure because I don't want to catch you in the middle of uh, talking to your agent. Please welcome to the, to the show. Alicia Cooper, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> hey, Lamont, how you doing? How you been? I've been good. How are you? You looking well? Man, I'm trying to make it, man. I shot two films in a pandemic. Yeah, yeah. And we're we going to talk about it. We're we, we going to slow walk it. We got to let the people know who you are first. Uh, give us a little bit of your background. Tell us, you know, where you're from and, and some of you roll off some of your many credits. OK, so let me tell y'all I'm from Temple Hills, Maryland. And um, I started out while I was at a student at Maryland College Park. I started interning at BT in DC. And so, cause I always had a love for television production. My major was radio, television, film at University of Maryland. And then after I graduated, I ended up working at BT and then I moved to LA and then I'm working at BT in LA. I produced some shows like Oh Drama with Kim Whitley, Vanessa Bell Calloway and Mari Morrow. I uh, went on to do a bunch of shows for BT and then did some reality shows for BT. I produced um, uh, uh, College Hill, I uh, produced uh, DMX's reality show, Little Kim's reality show, a bunch of stuff. And then I worked on some sick. I got a part uh, that was a lot of fun. I was in the writer's room with the best in the business. Sarah Finney Johnson started out on The Jeffersons. And she mm. co-created co Moesha and then went on to co Parker. So I'm sitting in the room with her. Bill co-created 227. Remember 227? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, yeah, just awesome, awesome, awesome experience. And I was hoping that I would get a chance to stay in the writer's room because I was a trainee. And unfortunately, I didn't understand how it worked. Other people were in line in front of me, assistants and production assistants and writer's assistants. Everybody was in line in front of me. So I didn't get to stay. So I went back to reality shows. Then I started doing stand up comedy full time because I've been a comic for 20 years. And then I said, you know what? I'm going to really try to figure out what is it that I want to do. And this pandemic, just for me, like it did for a lot of other Americans, gave us enough time to sit down Indian style corner and figure out what we wanted to do with our lives. You know what? Let me continue my road of writing and directing and directing things that I wrote. Because some people get to direct things other people wrote, but, but that hasn't been my experience. So me to direct, I had to write. Right. So that wrote trade, and that was a 30-minute, half-hour short. The best way I could describe that is Brokeback Mountain and Moonlight Me Fatal Attraction. Okay. The second one was, was just us. Wait a, minute, wait, a minute, wait a minute, let's slow that down. Slow that down. <laughs> <laughs> Brokeback Mountain, the movie, Moonlighting, the TV show. No, Moonlight. Moonlight, the movie oh, that won. Yeah. Remember that year that was a mix-up with Who Won? And it ended oh, up yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. yeah, Moonlight and uh, meets Fatal Attraction. So three okay. Oscar award winning, Oscar award nominated movies, you know, are all inspired yeah. me in a different, in various ways. So that's trade. And uh -huh. then Just Us is a movie about, I mean, you know, I always say like sometimes there's justice and sometimes there's just us. Okay. And so Justice, Justice, um, Just Us is about uh, a guy who got away with lynching a young man when he was young in college, him and his buddies, because he thought the young man had made advances to his sister. And the young mm -hmm. man comes back to him in adult form and they have a conversation because the mm -hmm. older judge is living his best life and the young black man never got an opportunity to. Wow. So okay. It's, it's so more, supernatural more of a drama. Thing. More of a drama. Yeah. All right. yeah. So the last one, don't say it yet. We're gonna okay. I'm gonna save that one. I'm gonna save okay. that one. So <laughs> up to this point, right? So you 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 pivoted. So when I so a little backstory. Um, when I was here, when I first got, when I was in DC, coming up in DC radio and I started comedy, um, you were around, 
But yeah. you were kind of you were kind of back and forth. You were like one of the people that that left early, yeah. left town and, and, and you know, hit the road and, and went to Hollywood. And when I got to, to, to Hollywood, you you were really in a groove. You were in a groove. You were you were doing mainstream and urban. And like you said, you were in the writers rooms or whatever. Um, talk about the industry as it was then for you as a female, as a black female. Oh, we, um, you know, difficult, yeah, yeah. <laughs> difficult, because what we have to realize is most industries are male dominated. It doesn't matter what the industry is. If you talk about medicine, most of the doctors are men. You know, if it doesn't matter which fortune 500 companies, most of the CEOs are men and comedy is no different. Yeah. So it's a lot of men, men look out for men. You know, it's just a, it's a boys club, a boys network. So you're all, you always feel like this interloper trying to infiltrate a, a, a profession that's not meant for you. So, and then when women get breaks, they don't help other women because they're like, you know, it can only be one. You yeah. Know? Right. Right. So, when men don't feel that there can only be one. So, you know, it's, 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 it's difficult. It's di you're at the back of the line mm -hmm. and you just got to keep clawing and clawing and clawing and clawing and clawing your way closer to the front of the line. And you got to understand, I did that four times. Mm. I did that in LA. I started from the back and had to work my way up. Then I moved to Maryland back home in 2008. I was in the back and I had to that. claw my way back up. Then mm -hmm. I moved to New York City. I was in the back and had to claw mm -hmm. my way back up. And then I went to Las Vegas and I was in the back and had to claw my oh, way back I, up. I missed that. So what was that about? Why <laughs> yeah, Vegas? I went to Vegas? You know what? I was so tired of traveling. You know, I was so tired of traveling because, you know, we traveled overseas for the troops and, right. you know, I've been to lots of countries overseas, you know, just a plane ride over there is like two days, you know. So and, and in the beginning, it's exciting. Everything's exciting in the beginning. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But then after you do something for a few years, you're like, OK, yeah. what's the next? That wear and so, tear. That wear and tear. Wear and tear. That living out of a suitcase. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, so I said, you know what, what do you want to do next? And I said, well, I want to be able to work somewhere and sleep in my own bed. So I said, mm. let's try Vegas, because if you get a residency in Las Vegas oh, true story. And, you're the, yeah. and you're in the same place several nights a week, you can sleep at home. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and then Vegas was cheap. It still is like you can get a two bedroom, two bathroom in Vegas for seven hundred dollars a month. And that includes your cable. <laughs> yeah. So did you get the residency or you were just a resident? I was just a resident. I was oh, trying yeah. to get a residency. I almost got it. Edwin San Juan got it. He, he snuck in right and get right in and got it. And Edwin got the residency. Um, and uh, but you know what? It still was a great experience. I met a lot of new comics that I had never known, never met before. A lot of us are still friends to this day. It was a great experience. Um, a, a lot of fun, a lot of fun did a lot of the big casinos and, mm -hmm. you know, everything is a learning experience, you yeah. know? So yeah. that's I, what I, it I, is. My only Vegas story is um, I only know one person that had a residency and that was uh, George Wallace. Yeah. And uh, I remember early on this 08, 07. And um, I told him, he was like, come on down anytime, man, just come on down and tell him, you know, just leave my name at the door. And I came out, yeah, I called him one time. I said, yo, me and my wife here. And he was like, your wife. And then he hung up on me. Like he was, <laughs> but anyway, moving on. Uh, he was, <laughs> I was married. Uh, <laughs> so let's go back to uh, to Hollywood. So you you're in the writers' rooms, you're writing for shows, you you pitching, you're doing all that. You mentioned being um, side by side with a with a legend. Now this is a white lady, I presume. No, black oh, lady, yeah. Sarah really? Penny Johnson, black lady. Sarah that's Penny Johnson. Johnson. Okay. Yeah, and she co-created Moesha along with uh, Viz Spears and Ralph Farquhar. And uh, Ralph Farquhar started out what well, he did. I think um, I think he did like Crush Groove or something. He did some big films, but then his big TV show was Married with Children. Mm, and yeah. so for Married with Children, they went over and created it was three African Americans, and they created Moesha with Brandy. Yeah, yeah. You did know, you if you come in with a heavy hitter. You yeah, know, it, right. it makes it a lot easier to sell your show. <laughs> but once you saw that they were taking care of their people, did that did that um, dissuade you in any way? Like, did that really, um, you know, take the wind out of yourselves? When I when I saw what when you when you saw that they were taking care of their people first, like you said, you yeah. couldn't get in the right writers' room all the way because yeah. there were people in line and you had to learn that lesson. Did, yeah. did, did that make you bitter at all? 
It didn't make me bitter because what I realized was there was a pecking order and these people were paying their dues in a sense. Mm -hmm. If you're the writer's assistant, that's a job I would never have. You are in that room, type, you're like a court stenographer. And mm -hmm. I mean, you are typing and you are typing and you are typing. And then every revision, then you got to change it to the pink script. And then you type and you type. Then you just the blue script. Then you type it. Then it's the, 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 the uh, aqua script. And yeah. I mean, what they do is brutal. Yeah. So I'm like, I could, I'm sitting in the room just throwing out jokes, laughing, you know, so I didn't have that kind of pressure. And I was like, yeah, they, they, they deserve, they deserve. So I yeah. couldn't even hate. My thing was, I was just glad that I had the 26 weeks to learn how to do it. And then mm. I said, you know what, let me try to sell my own stuff. You know, right. that's, that's the way I came away. It, it was painful that I had to walk away from that writer's room up on a successful show. But right. I understand that, you know, if, if I, I got it, I got it. If I was the person in line, I would want my spot, you know, yeah. I, you know, so I had to, it didn't, it didn't make it hurt any less, but right. I understood it. You know, and everything in this industry, you have to get in there just to learn what the real protocols are. Cause I didn't have any idea when I first started doing stand up, I didn't even know what that entailed. I didn't know people mm. were writing jokes. Mm. <laughs> what you think they were doing? I thought it was doing like we do on the back of the school bus, just jumping. Oh, just and off the top of your head, right? Yeah. <laughs> you know yeah. I didn't know I, they were preparing and act. <laughs> I, yeah, I had to learn. I had to learn that lesson too. Yeah. I had to learn that lesson, and when you see them on TV, because you know, Def Jam was our first real introduction into our peers doing mm -hmm. comedy at a high level. We didn't realize they had been doing those jokes on the road for three, Sorry. four, five years before yeah. we saw them. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And another thing we didn't realize, Lamont was that people did Def Jam and bombed and they never aired them. Yes. There are a couple <laughs> people, that we, couple that we people never aired. They, they got yeah. up there, they choked, they bombed, and they never aired them. So we just thinking it's so easy. Everybody doing well. We don't realize how many people bombed and didn't get aired. Mm, true story. <laughs> you know, so so I had forward. to learn. I had to learn. I had to learn everything from the bottom to the top. But let me tell you this, that I learned about being in a writer's room. You are essentially, it's like being on a Supreme Court. You're mm -hmm. doing everything by committee. Yes. So it's not like you, you throw your best joke out there and if, if everybody else goes, mm -mm, your joke is not going to make it on air. As a stand-up oh. comic, nobody can veto the words that are coming out of my mouth. Yeah, that's real. <laughs> and that's, that's what real. made it the best for me. I'm yeah. like, okay, well, y'all done shot down my jokes in this writer's room. Well, tonight I'm going to stage. I'm saying everything I want to say. And 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 also as a as a writer's assistant, you could you could have the best joke and, and won't get the credit for. Yeah, it could be political. It could be yeah, real yeah. political. Yeah. All yeah. right. So fast forward to the pandemic, 2020. Um, you a lifelong creative and, and and everything's put on hold. What was it that inside of you that said, all right, is, this is now's the time. Let me let me get these these movies done. Let me do them myself. Let me go uh, find a way to get them out and, and keep it moving. How, how did we get to this place? Well, this is this is really what happened. And I think for us as African-Americans, the only thing that has held us back from really taking over the world is finances. Mm. <laughs> because. I didn't have the finances to make these films features. It would cost me at least $300,000 to make these short films features. So because I didn't have $300,000, I had to make them short. So what I did was before the pandemic, I wrote trade and I wanted trade to be a feature. There's no way I was going to be able to get $300,000, but I found a company who was going to put $50,000 into it, but they owned it. I mean, owned it, you know, so I signed a very bad deal. I will tell you that right now because mm. I didn't have any what they call narrative directing uh, to start a reel with. I have all this reality show directing, which is not, not considered it. a narrative, you know, so I can't go get work. I couldn't get work as a filmmaker. I couldn't get work as a doing television and size. I couldn't turn in a reel and apply for Grey's Anatomy. Because they had never seen me do a narrative. So I'm like, if I want to do a narrative, I'm going to have to go ahead and take this horrible deal. And it was horrible. But the outcome was amazing as far as my reel. Now, what I'm realizing as a director, you can't have a reel with one project. Right. Because you're applying for programs and the people pl applying for programs with you have at least three projects. You know, they might have a music video. They might have a web series. They might have one narrative short film, but they have more stuff to cut, intercut through their reel than my right. one project. I said, okay, so now I'm going to need at least two more. So once the pandemic hit, 
I was like, okay, you don't have nothing but time. But what you have to do is you have to get a crew and a cast willing to work in a pandemic. <laughs> you know, and some people was like, I'm afraid of the COVID, girl. I can't do that. A lot of people was like, I have cabin fever. When and mm -hmm. where do we start? <laughs> you know, everybody got paid. And um, and and what I did was I had every I sent a link to everybody, and yep. the link was a place to go and get COVID tested for free. So I asked everybody to go get COVID tested five days before we shoot because it takes like three days to get the results back. And everybody did it. Everybody was negative. So we were all good. We were calm about the fact that we had already been tested. And then everybody had individually packaged meals, drinks, of course, an individual. Everybody mm. had on masks. You know, some people had, we had gloves available, all the antibacterial wipes and, 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 and hand sanitizer. And we stayed six feet apart. You know, especially in a strip club, we had way more space, more than more space than we needed to socially distance. Right, right, keep strip club. right, right. So, um, so we got it done. We got yeah. it done, and I used and, the same group of people twice. Oh, even even more brilliant. And see, and see, I wanted you to you know break that down and go into that to give people game on on how to get stuff done. There's there's ways, and you know, from from surviving in, in the game and in Hollywood for so long, you learn to do so much with so little. So yeah. in a time like this. You just activate. That is, I mean, today, that is the superpower. Look at that. That's the superpower on the Great Conjunction using what you got. All right, let's jump into this um, this first one. We haven't, we haven't talked about the second one yet, but let's, let's jump into uh, the Just Us trailer, written, directed, produced. And then when we come back, we're going to talk about the platform uh, where these are being featured on. Uh, so here we go. This is Just Us, written, produced. Are you in this one? No. Okay, all right. All right. Directed. By Alicia Cooper, ladies and gentlemen. Here we go. Phone's ringing. Jeremiah, twenty nine eleven. For I know the plans that I have for you, declares the Lord. Plans to prosper you, and not to harm you. Plans to give you hope and a future. You've been out here living your best life all these years. I give back to the community. College boy. I'm a good man. I'm a family man. What do you want from me? Confess! I know I can never undo what I did before, but I'm... I'm trying to atone. Give me that. Oh, you black skin. Mm. Okay. Came out the gate with, with yeah. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, a uh, comedian, Alicia Cooper. Yeah, came out the gate with that one. Okay, then. <laughs> uh, all right. But see, this is the thing, Lamont. What people don't realize about us as comics, we when can you write think in. about comics, comics are very dramatic people. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know what I'm yeah. When you think about who wins Oscars, a lot of times, they're the comedians. People don't even know Michael Keaton was a stand-up. You yeah, know what yeah, I'm saying? Yeah. It's comedians. Right. Look at Monique won an Oscar for Precious. Jamie mm -hmm. Foxx won an Oscar. You know, a lot of the uh, uh, Robin Robin Williams. Right, you yeah. Know? So comics have levels. You yeah. know, they want to put you in a box, but comics have levels. <laughs> now, I, uh, I'm going to go real quick to the uh, peanut gallery, our chat. Uh, somebody mentioned 300000 and they were surprised when you mentioned the budget. Um, 500000 is a term. It's called, my, what is micro budget? Is it micro budget? Mm -hmm. that, that's like, that's low. Yeah. That's that's low in Hollywood. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so you the uphill battle that that is when that's considered a low budget film between three and 500,000. Yeah. And um, uh, also you left out, you know, you, you, you're a hustler of all sorts. You left out the part about when you were crowdfunding, mm -hmm. when you were trying to micro source in the beginning, that was about two or three years ago. I think it was for trade. It was and for you, trade. You hit you hit your contact list. I remember the emails. You hit your contact list. It's like here's the trailer. This is what I want to do. Here's the script. Yeah. Shoot me some money. It don't matter how much. I, you yeah. know, I, I hadn't talked to you in years. I, I shot off ten dollars. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah. I, I needed that too. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You gotta you gotta use your resources. So so what platform? Because I see that uh, I'm gonna put up the link shortly. There is a link to watch uh, both of your new movies. How did you get affiliated with that platform? 
Well, on LinkedIn, a lot of people hit me up on LinkedIn. That is a very, I, that is really a good platform because that's where the business people tend to reside. You know, it's LinkedIn, and I get hit up a lot on my DMs and just straight out. And um, a gentleman named Flea Lee hit me up, but when he hit me up, he was hitting me up about stand up. He was like, are you interested in doing a stand-up special? We can try to put something together in Las Vegas. And I said, you know what, Flea, right now, I'm trying to focus on this, this directing and this writing. I really want to be able to write and direct feature films. And so I said, so I, I can't split myself up like that. You know what it takes to put together a comedy mm -hmm. special, you mm -hmm. know? So I was like, right now, that's not where I am. I might be back there sometime late 2021. So then later on, he saw on LinkedIn, some of my trailers, he reached back out again. And he said, what are you doing with those? I said, you know what, I'm trying to figure out what I'm gonna do with these. I said, because after I did them, I've just used them to cut together a director's reel so that I can get an agent and get some work. But I do mm. want to get them out there. So Flea Lee is like basically a black Netflix. <laughs> okay, yeah. a platform. Because I, I, I saw today, um, this, this is off topic, Clubhouse is already having issues. And uh, with content and, and I see people all day with someone, when are we going to get our own? Black people need to make their own platform. It, Flea Lee TV is one of those yeah. streaming services. Yes. And, and, and here you have uh, Alicia Cooper with two of her projects on there now. And uh, which leads me to the second one. Uh, <laughs> which You had me at the title. Let's talk about Fat Stripper and where that idea came from. <laughs> Okay, so first of all, fast stripper. I wasn't even gonna be the fast stripper, you know. Okay, just, you know, because I, I people don't understand directing is a lot of work. You got every shot. You have to select every shot. So it's like to be in. You can't be in front of the camera and behind the scenes at the exact same time. So I right. can't be behind the monitor watching the shots if I'm the lead. So I'm like, ooh, this is gonna be a lot. But then I said, you know what? Go ahead. You've been acting forever. Go ahead and make yourself the lead. Um, you know, you just have to stop down and have them sh rewind back and show you the last shot. You can look at it afterwards, which takes a little bit longer, but yeah. you know, it's doable. Other people do it all the time. Just go ahead and bet on yourself. You don't have to pay yourself like you would have to pay another actor. <laughs> so I said, I'll go ahead and do it. And, um, and it was very challenging, very challenging. I mean, I was sweating because i'm playing two roles so and then yeah. it's hard to stay in character when you got to jump out of character to go direct and the director yeah. on the set is the person everybody whatever question somebody has That's comes to that director is yeah. this the right wardrobe you know so and so ain't here yet blah, blah blah i mean everything comes to that director so i have to direct and i have to be in character so it's like you jumping in and out of character and then you have to i mean you're wearing many hats many huge hats yeah. So, um, you know, there's a couple shots I wasn't able to get, you know, there's things that, you know, I know that could have been done better. Sure. And the thing is that I'm doing it with a low budget. When Steven Spielberg and these guys do a film, they have the budget that supports them knocking yeah. it out the park. Right. <laughs> you know what I'm so I'm doing everything on a shoestring, but I'm still, this is the way you want to learn. Yeah, you know? absolutely. And this, this is the way this you want to learn. This is the way you want your early projects to look. So the later on down the line, people will be like, well, look how far you've come. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> All right, let's get into this trailer right now. From the people that didn't bring you P Valley comes Fat Stripper. <laughs> the Verona virus has taken the world by storm. This pandemic has come on like gangbusters. Girl, I've just started working again after being unemployed for six months. Alicia Miller just can't catch a break. If you touch an infected surface, you're screwed. Literally. I can't afford to lose this job right now. And you know it's bad when I'm down to my last four gallons of haagen and two bags of rockets. Desperate times call for desperate measures. Girl, you know my panties are like a cop's body can around any black man. Oh, <laughs> you know <what> I'm <laughs> May I help you? Um, I'm here to see Smith T. I can't loan you any money. I'm here to strip. Oh, <laughs> we fat shaming that. True. <laughs> All right, you can start tonight. Be here at nine. Promote me, Smitty. You stuck on these toothpicks. What you don't realize is thin is no longer in. She certainly was one hot piece of tail. And now. It's the return of Woo! Oh! <laughs> Alicia Cooper stars in Fat Stripper. 
She strips for chips. <laughs> she strips for chips. Oh, man. Outstanding. <laughs> I got to give you a double round of applause for that. <laughs> but don't put the now, I'm putting the link in here. Now, Mr. Uh, Mr. Clarkson posted the link. Um, repost this one, Mr. Clarkson. This one is the one that includes uh, my uh, my code, my special code. So repost yeah. this. Yeah. yeah, make sure y'all click on the one that says Radio King. Yeah, yeah, that's that's the one to say so they know that it came from here. So yeah, so there's that. Uh, and you can watch both movies through the link on that on that platform, correct? On that streaming yeah. service. Both of them. They're both on there. It's five ninety nine and a small service fee. But you can see both of them as of December twenty third. You know, the twenty second at midnight. This, he's doing like Netflix level stuff. Okay. Twenty okay. second at midnight, just like how Netflix does. Because I yeah. just saw Mom Rainey's Black Bottom at right midnight. Right. You no, know, so midnight after the twenty second, you'll be able to see it because it comes up live on the twenty third at twelve a.m. So yeah, 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 yeah. Both of them, you'll see both projects on uh, at, on Flea Lee TV, and and he put up the link for you. Lamar put up the link for you. The one that says Radio King. That's the link. You yeah. Want to yeah, that's what's up, man. I'm 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 really happy for you. I'm proud of you, and, I, and those projects look good. And uh, we can't wait wait to watch them. What's what, what's next? Anything down the pike after this? Or are you just promoting this hard? For 2021 yeah I'm, tr I'm promoting real hard for 2021 yeah 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 so you know I'm, I'm looking forward to it i got a lot of people reaching out to me that want to air this fast strippers making some noise you yeah, know? yeah yeah so <laughs> yeah and, and i plan on turning it into a feature i want um because you know fast stripper the feature we're gonna have big girl night every sunday and that's gonna be the night that pays the bills for the rest of the week so i want to get gabby sitter bay in here to run the big girl night I want to get Lizzo in here because Lizzo's mentioned as part of, you know, a part of this movie. And I want to get uh, Joe's Freak Shack is the competition to Smitty's. And I want to get Snoop Dogg to play Joe of Joe's Freak okay. Shack. So, okay. you know, so yeah, 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 yeah. We coming with the, we coming with the five power in 2021. But ladies and gentlemen, Alicia Cooper, Fat Stripper, and Just Us, two projects available now on Fleet TV. The link is on the screen. You got to use that link. Use that link. And that's the link that, uh, get you where you need to be. I appreciate you. I appreciate you too, Lamont. Thank you for everything. I don't care if it is a closet. You still looking mad efficient.